PayPal, wait for the brain tree moment. PayPal is one of the last remaining value opportunities in the tech sector. The company's growth is being challenged by competition, but its unbranded pay, uh, processing segment continues to grow very rapidly. Management continues to show a strong commitment to profitable growth and share repurchases. I expect Braintree to be the main catalyst for a meaningful re-rating higher. PayPal has offered investors a prolonged buying opportunity, which seems unusual given that tech stocks as a whole have been spiking without abandon. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's been pretty crazy, and it's not like PayPal hasn't been growing their business. They've been growing their bottom line and their top line recently. So it has been pretty fascinating to watch this stock, you know, not perform like some of these other stocks are performing despite putting up really good numbers, right? Management has issued conservative expectations for 2024 with hopes for stronger growth in 2025 and thereafter. The company still has a net cash balance sheet and profitable operations, but the lack of near-term catalysts may mean some investors or may keep some investors away. Mm. Yeah, I don't know about, you know, lack of near-term catalysts. I think a couple of the near-term catalysts are just them putting up nice growth rates, beating the the guidance numbers they put out there, right? And that's going to get a whole new excitement around this. And I think as the quarters tick on, if if Alex Chris and the management team can keep coming in and beating numbers, I think you're going to see more and more investors. And I'm talking big money, Wall Street, hedge funds, institutional money. I think you'll see more of that type of money start to flow into the stock as they get more confidence in Alex Chris, right? You know, with the stock trading at low double-digit multiple of earnings, I cannot ignore the compelling value as the low valuation and strong balance sheet have priced in a great deal of pessimism. I reiterate my strong buy as I expect the rapidly growing brain tree business to eventually earn a premium multiple from this market. Yeah, you know, what is it really attracted me to PayPal? Was it, was it, you know, let, let's say PayPal was trading at a 35 forward P. Am I attracted to PayPal? Probably not. Uh, you know, would this have been a stock I bought heavily? No. At a forward P of 12? It's a whole different story, right? I mean, one has such a low level of risk and such a high upside potential that it makes sense. If, if PayPal, would say, is trading at a, a forward P of 40, it's not nearly as attractive, right? There's a lot of downside there. It's like, could I see PayPal going down 50% if they had a forward P of 40 on the stock? Sure, because then we'll put them kind of down to a forward P of 20, right? And obviously, we're trading way below that right now. So this is where valuations matter. You can't just buy a stock because you like the stock or something like that. You got to really understand valuations on a high level, right? That's stuff we get into, obviously, in that Becoming Master of the Stock Market course. I get all into valuations. And obviously, in the private group, I get ridiculously into all that stuff, right? That nitty gritty stuff. Nowadays, there aren't many tech stocks that are trading far from their 52-week lows in 2021 highs. But PayPal is one of the few that still is around 2017 levels. Yes, which just shows you how much pessimism there's really in this stock, right? I last covered PayPal in January where I discussed the company's disappointing, shocked the world results, but rated the stock a strong buy on account of low valuation. Hello, helicopter. I just do what you want. Fly your, fly your little chopper all around. I continue to find shares attractive even if there's not a lot to be excited about in the near term. PayPal's key stock metrics. In this most recent quarter, PayPal generated 9% year-over-year revenue growth to over $8 billion, exceeding guidance for the year up 8% year-over-year. Non-GAAP BPS grew 19% year-over-year and exceeded the gui- the guidance, right? So here he's showing the revenue numbers, right? Nice growth there. Transaction margin, which is, you know, this is somewhere people look for weakness as far as what's going on in the company. And obviously non-GAAP numbers looking very, very, very good. The company has continued to show struggling active accounts growth with growth coming in negative 2% year-over-year. That's another thing. If they can get growth going again in the right direction, woo, that's a whole other you know growth vector for the, for the stock price, right? Management blamed the poor growth on being reflective of churn of unengaged accounts, but it is hard to dispute the narrative that the company's first mover advantage in e-commerce checkout is being challenged by formidable competition from the likes of Apple Pay and others, right? No doubt, a lot of competition in this market, but once again, that competition is not new. Competition's been there. Apple Pay is not new. Apple Pay's been out for... Apple Pay's been out for like a decade now, has it not? Like it's been a long time. Active accounts. So this is where they have not seen any growth, right? And so if they can get active accounts to get back to growth this year, I do believe that's a huge, huge, uh, you know, area where the stock price would start going up considerably. Because right now, the main, the main only negative things you can really say about PayPal is transaction margin dollars 
have been pretty stagnant and active accounts have been not good, right? Outside of that, you really can't say anything. You can't say anything about the valuation, the income statement, the balance sheet. I mean, those are really your only two things you got to go off of, right? TPV, total payment volume mix across PayPal payments. PayPal branded checkout up 6% fiscal year 2023, right? Unbranded, look at that growth, 30%, 30%. Then Venmo is at 9%, right? So clearly, Braintree is the massive growth factor for this company. The company generated $2.5 billion in free cash flow in the quarter, but that was positively impacted from offloading $1.7 billion of the buy now, pay later loan receivables, adjust, which de-risked the business actually big time there. I, thought, I love that move. Adjusted free cash flow was $774 million, a decline of 46% year over year. The company ended the quarter with $6 billion in net cash, representing a bulletproof balance sheet, 100%. That's where I talk about the low levels of risk in this stock, right? When you talk about getting it for that sort of valuation, 4P of 12 or whatever, and then getting this sort of balance sheet with the profits that pour in, right? The cash flow that pours in, that takes so much risk out of a stock like this versus a lot of other stocks in the market, right? Looking ahead, management has guided for 6.5% year-over-year revenue growth versus consensus of 6.8% and mid-single-digit non-gap EPS growth. Now, first off, in regards to this guidance, are they sandbagging? My opinion is, yes, they're sandbagging. Why would they sandbag? It's Alex Chris' first full year. This is going to be his first full year. He just got in the company like two quarters ago. This is going to be his first full year. Do you want to go in and say we're going to grow 10%, 11%? No. You want to sandbag a little bit. 6.5%, then come in, beat that number next quarter, beat it again the following quarter, beat it again, up your numbers for the full year, mid-year, right? And then beat it again in the fourth quarter. That's how you play this game. That's how you build trust. People starting to know you for beating your numbers and not missing your numbers, right? There's a big difference there. Guidance for Q1 2024, mid-single digit growth on a non-GAAP basis. Non-GAAP effective tax rate, 19 to 20%. Revenue growth, 6.5% on a spot basis. And on an FX neutral basis, 7%. For the full year, they're talking about at least $5 billion of share repurchase, which is going to help that EPS massively. As you take the insane amount of shares off the market, <sighs> it's got to be big for that EPS, folks. Uh, free cash flow, talking about approximately $5 billion. Non-GAAP EPS, they're talking, uh, talking about in line with the prior year, which is around 510. Management did note that they will begin including stock-based compensation in the calculation of non-GAAP EPS, ad addressing a typical bearish complaint. But I note that this adjustment is not reflected in the 510-2024 guidance, nor the 117-2024-Q1 guidance, as it will only be reflected beginning in the next quarter. As I have some investment analysis suggests otherwise. Make no mistake, management is guiding for earnings to remain flat on a year-over-year -year basis, which implies considerable margin deterioration given the ongoing revenue growth and, and share repurchase program. Once again, I think they're sandbagging. We'll see as the year shakes out, but I think they're sandbagging. On the conference call, management explained that the decision to begin including equity-based compensation in non-GAAP EPS is aimed to introduce more accountability and discipline. I like it. It doesn't make the 2024 numbers as exciting if you're going to be more truthful than the company's been in the past, but I like it, okay? I want, I want I'll, you know, as, as somebody that wants to be a shareholder of companies for years and years and years, I'd rather my management team be much more accountable and, and disciplined and truthful, right? Management emphasized that they are committed to maintaining an investment grade credit rating and aim to spend approximately 70% 70, 70 to 80% of our free cash flow on share buybacks. This might imply around $3.5 to $4 billion in 2024 share repurchases, but management notes that due to the strong cash position, they intend to repurchase at least $5 billion, at least $5 billion. All things considered, management appears to be saying all the right things, and this is a playbook that has worked for other companies heading into this tech rally. Meta Platforms comes to mind. I, I've uh, you know, talked about that one many times, obviously, right? It's my number one position in the public account, up 300 plus percent on it now. Could we see PayPal up 300% for me in a few years? It's possible. We'll see. But when investors reward PayPal with a similar treatment, if ever, mm, good question, is PayPal stock a buyer, hold, or sell? It's easy to forget that PayPal is one of the pioneers in enabling e-commerce transaction. While the company is most well-known for its branded checkout in Venmo app, I instead draw your, your attention to the unbranded Braintree product that has been growing rapidly. So let's see. What do they have here? Um, 
Well, here they had the forward P of the stock, right, trading at 12 times, which is just insane, absolutely insane. They have the revenue growth expectations there, about 7 to 8% over these coming years. Well, I can make an argument that Adyen may be higher quality business due to its stronger overall growth rates. It is really worth 39 times 2024 estimated EBITDA when PayPal trades at 9 times 2024 estimated EBITDA. Good point. That is pricing in nearly six years of 30% growth just to narrow the gap. But that is also assuming no growth from PayPal, which seems unlikely. 100%. I continue to see PayPal eventually trading at a 15 to 18 times earnings. I think a 20 to 22 would be much more fair for the stock, in my personal opinion. When you look at the growth rates, if you can grow your revenue 7 to 8% a year, right? And let's say you grow your bottom line at a little bit of a faster clip than that, let's call it 9 to 10%. You, the rate the rate valuation for you is kind of in the 20 to 22 range, in my opinion. But the catalyst to drive this re-rating may be elusive. Yes, the company's commitment to profitable growth and share repurchases may help over the long term, but these are unlikely to spur near-term reaction. Instead, I expect continued growth from the unbranded processing to end up being the catalyst. As Braintree becomes a bigger and bigger portion of the business, I expect Wall Street to reward PayPal stock with a higher multiple as it realizes the profitability can continue and improve alongside the growth. And you you know what's uh, uh, something very, very important that no one's factoring in this whole brain tree situation? No one's factoring this in. And I'm like, this is something I can't believe more people don't talk about. With the brain tree side, right? That side of the business is going to be ridiculously sticky. Ridiculously sticky. The Once they get in the door with a big e-commerce company or an app or whatever, right? It's going to be very sticky. And for then somebody to move off of Braintree, once they're starting to use Braintree, and then they start using it for more and more of the options that Braintree allows you to do to manage your, your back end or your financials and your business and things like that, I think it's going to be extremely unlikely that folks then say, you know what, let's go ahead and replace Braintree with something else, right? Consumers many times can use one app one moment, then switch to another, then switch to another. Consumers can be sometimes a little more fickle. Big companies, once they use something and it works, they don't want to switch off that. They want to stay in that product. The only way you can get them to switch is if you do a bad job for them. And from my understanding, Braintree does a great job for all their customers. So unless Braintree screws up things for their customers, people are just going to continue to use it. It's just like it's the peace of mind. You, even if somebody said, you know, hey, we can save you a little bit of money by doing this, you'd be like, nah, I'm, I'm not interested because this works flawlessly. I don't want any issues. You just kind of get stuck in the ecosystem, right? What are the key risks? The company's branded checkout processing is under heavy competition pre competitive pressure, or at least that is what sentiment dictates. It bears noting that PayPal branded processing total payment volume grew by 5% year over year, though that might not be as important as a fear of ongoing disruption. The company, the, the branded uh, processing, right? So that's different than the unbranded, the, the obviously Braintree side. The company may need to show stabilizing results in its branded processing and acceleration overall top line growth rates as a result from the continued stellar results from the unbranded processing. Before re-rating occurs, this is no easy task and investors might need to be patient. It is possible that the macroeconomic environment worsens or that branded processing volumes growth deteriorates further simply due to competition. It is also possible that unbranded processing growth slows down and the company's strong growth over the past few years proves transitory. I can see the stock trading between 8 times and 12 times earnings until re-rating thesis takes place. I personally am not con concerned with the volatility given the strong balance sheet and confidence in the long-term thesis, but investors hoping for a quick trade might be disappointed. I reiterate my strong buy rating for the stock, and valuation looks particularly compelling when compared against lofty valuations for other tech stocks as a whole. Right. So, first off, in, in regards to, I mean, the stock's up high. It's just like the, the risk reward is too dang compelling in regards to PayPal. Right. It's too compelling. Twelve times this year's expected earnings, with his massive share buyback on a guide. Even if I think about, let's not even think about the next five years. Even let's just think about this year, okay? Is PayPal risky this year? Probably not getting a recession this year. It's potential, but probably not, right? Next year, the year after, the year after, what well, could be a whole totally different Probably not getting it this year. So that kind of takes that out of it, right? Is the Fed likely to go higher on rates this year? Probably not, right? So we got two probably nots 
already out of the way, right? Next up, do they have insanely um, high numbers to hit this year? No. So they're probably going to beat their numbers throughout the year, right? Stocks trading at a very low valuation. You've got so many of the, the boogeymen out of the way. And if Alex Chris can put up those numbers, it's going to convince more and more people to say, hey, you know what? PayPal's a great company. It's, it's got several compelling businesses. I got to be part of this. Now, on top of that, if active accounts can grow, then you take that boogeyman out of the market of like declining active accounts, right? So if we can get that boogeyman out as well, you got, you got really nothing left at that point in time, right? So now the last thing I'll say here is a lot of people, uh, you know, get focused around the stock price. They want the stock price up in the short term, right? They want to see the stock back at 80, 100, $120 very quickly here. Here's why you shouldn't want that. You shouldn't want that. If you're planning on being in the stock for the next three, five years, you shouldn't want that. And here's why. Right now, as we spoke about, they're doing that massive share repurchase, right? Guess what? They can get a lot more shares at $65 than if they were doing the buyback at $85 or $105 or $125, right? And so if you're really thinking about the stock and rooting for the stock over the next three to five years, you should want the stock to stay under under $70 for as long as we can here in the short term while they're buying back all these shares, right? So that's just a little more food for thought. And then the last thing I'll say here is if the stock starts to move, let's say active accounts, you know, they stabilize that and maybe that gets back to slight growth. Revenue comes in and beats, EPS comes in and beats, you know, good conference calls, all those sorts of things. Imagine all that plays out while the company's got a big buyback going on. Oh boy, because then you're talking about big money's going to be flooding into PayPal stock. Simultaneously, you're going to have the company buying a ton of shares, and it's going to create this environment. And, and anybody that wanted to sell the stock has already sold it over the past three years, right? You can't get the stock to go any lower, really, in the short term. Anytime it goes lower, it gets bought right back up. So <laughs> then you just have a ridiculous amount of buying pressure on the stock for like a 12 to 24 month span, which creates a very interesting dynamic for the stock price to go you know, to appreciate considerably, right? And next thing you know, all of a sudden, PayPal's $100, $120, $150, and it happens pretty quick. So you kind of want to root for it to be lower here in the short term, but I'm not so convinced the stock's going to be lower in the short term. Obviously, you know how I feel about the next three to five years with PayPal, but even this year, if I had to guess, is PayPal $60 at the end of the year or $100 at the end of the year? I would go much with 100 over 60 okay? PayPal. PayPal. So, I spoke about PayPal on today's video on the Reaction Channel. Jeremy Lefebvre makes money if you don't follow me on there, okay? And PayPal. Easy money. Easy money. Easy money. The, the thing with PayPal is the valuation is just so darn attractive. That's what makes... There's two core things, I would say, that make PayPal such an attractive stock. One is the forward P. Right, the forward P on this stock is insanely low. This is a beta, no one has access to this except me right now. Um, you know, PayPal trading at 12 times forward PE, pay ratio 0.79 on this baby. You know, that sort of net margin on this company, like, come on, come on. So it's just a no brainer. You know, you just look at all the metrics. It's a no-brainer stock. And and the other great thing with, with PayPal is we're talking about a company here that we're, we're talking about a company that you, where where my other thing go? Here it is, trading view. We're talking about a company in which they have a diversified business model. This isn't just a one-trick pony. If this was just PayPal and you got nothing else, ooh, it might not be as interested. Or if it was a trading at a different valuation. The fact that they get PayPal and Venmo and Braintree, like, oh my gosh. And some of the, one of the interesting things I was speaking about on the reaction channel here today in regards to PayPal that I don't think gets talked about nearly enough in regards to a stock is Braintree product is going to be incredibly sticky over time. If you're a big company, right, and you use Braintree for all your back end of running transactions as well as the other, you know, services Braintree can give you. I think it's, why would you go ahead and replace them? You wouldn't. You know, anybody that's a business owner out there, you know, like, if you've got to run transactions, you just want something that works great, is seamless, easy for customers, and once it's there, it's there. And you're not really interested in anything else, unless that other, whatever it is, is bad, 
right? If you have issues with that, they cause you problems, then you start looking for alternatives. But Braintree, from my understanding, people love that and they continue to use it for years and years and years. So I think Braintree is going to be incredibly sticky and, you know, some app starts using Braintree and as a small company and they end up becoming a big company like an Uber or whatever, right? They're going to DoorDash, whoever, right? They're going to continue to use them, you know, 10 years in the future, 20 years in the future. And maybe at first PayPal was only running a small amount of transactions. And then over time, those small amount of transactions ran into a lot of transactions, right? So the other thing with PayPal they're buying back a ridiculous amount of shares. They're talking about buying at least $5 billion worth of stock back this year. It's insane. And so, I mean, this isn't even like some huge market cap company in, in regards to PayPal, right? $60, $70 billion type market cap. And they're talking about buying at least $5 billion worth of shares back. You know what that's going to do? The earnings per share of this company. And then, do you think they're only going to buy shares this year? Probably not. They're probably going to buy a bunch more shares back next year. In the following year as well. You know why? Because PayPal generates massive cash flow. And I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Remember, this is still a company that is expected to grow and grow and grow. So, whew, you know, I, I, love, I love that I've been able to buy PayPal stock so cheap. And I love the, that the company has been able to buy the stock so cheap. It's, an, it's amazing, right? 